Thank you. Thanks for joining this afternoon. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so I've got in front of me a few delicious recipes. I uh, let the listeners know before that if anyone likes uh, uh, the herb bread, we've got some herb bread to share, some kitchery, and there's also a chutney, garam masala, a few other things. But let's just start off with just give us a brief intro about yourself. Tell us about yourself, who you are, what you do. Okay, uh, I'm Dr. Karuna Jaiswal. I studied from University of Delhi, Bachelor's of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery. And I'm from India, Delhi. And uh, then I moved to Australia in 2007. And then when I arrived, I always wanted to do acupuncture. I enrolled in SA College of Natural Medicine, which unfortunately closed down. But I tried to finish all the diplomas which I enrolled. I enrolled in a couple of four or five diplomas. So I was awarded as the best student because I finished three diplomas in eight months. Oh gosh, how did you do that? <laughs> You're staying up yeah. all night studying? No, um, <laughs> probably I'm a, one of the ignite sort of students who loves to study. You like studying, yeah. So That's then uh, I got diploma in uh, remedial massage, biofacial release, and mm. as they couldn't finish the acupuncture, so I was given as diploma in advanced acupressure. <laughs> Yeah, so then I wanted to study more about nutrition because that's my passion. In 2009, I started running cooking classes uh, based on the concept of food and medicine. And I still remember I was working at a yoga center called um, Kun, um, Kundalini Yoga Center, which was uh, rarest gem on Fluton Road. And she said, like, uh, my passion for treating the patients with different, different diseases was really nice. So... So um, we started our first talk in 2009, Food as Medicine, and then it went to a cooking mm -hmm. class. So there we have, the house was full. We had 16 people in, and um, I still remember there was a marketing head of uh, National Pharmacy, and she says, if I open up something big like that, she will be the first one to keep and uh, eating my food. So it was so <laughs> yummy and delicious, yeah. and they haven't, never tasted the spices as such because we made fresh garam masala fresh chopped everything and it was like big hit and since then i haven't stopped so i have been going for last 13 years now and i have been to tumbi bay um i have been to finis i have been to in around the areas just um, and uh, we did a retreat in 2015 at Barossa Valley and uh, now we are planning to do another retreat in November on the concept of food as medicine and how to heal self-heal yourself. It's a big big uh, topic isn't it? I think yeah, a lot of yeah. people are really into it. Yeah yeah. We want to be healthy we don't want to pop pills and go to the doctor I mean if we have to do it we have to do it but we want to avoid it. Yes so that's basically the main uh, concept is food so when we eat a food um, we have to understand why we eat the food. So the food has got different, different components. Like mostly people say that, oh, I want to eat proteins. I want to eat iron rich food. I want to do this. And But the main concept of food as medicine is whatever you are eating, you should get firstly nourishment out of it because it's our basic necessity, you know, to have food. So as a fuel. And then it can nourish our body, our soul. It can prevent so many diseases. So... Um, because I'm a nutritionist and I'm aligned with so many associations, I just had a, one article last week um, that how the research is going on prevention of the lifestyle diseases like diabetes, mm -hmm. hypertension, uh, osteoporosis. You know, osteoporosis is becoming a very major issue in Australia. And then people talk about cancer. So the biggest cancer which we are facing is the bowel cancer. And the CDC, because I've done so much research in when I was in Deakin University, so I studied nutrition from Deakin University in 2015. So when I started, they gave me the whole data, like how the food is impacting our bowel health. Mm. So which, like most of the people, they buy probiotics and all those things. So when they come to me, like um, yesterday only I had a patient uh, on Saturday I had a patient uh, who was feeling bloated gas distension for last three months so she came to me we did an elimination diet we did a planning of the nutrition food she should be consuming and what time she should be consuming and it all made sense to her and within three months she's so much better so that's my role as a nutritionist and as I with a physician 
that I help patients to evaluate what they are eating and how they are eating and how much portion they have to eat. So that's very important so that it becomes, it's your body is like a machine, you know, because we are made up of five elements and then the soul. So our biochemistry of the thing is that if we eat a food, it has to break down into different, different things. So like you eat the food, firstly, it has to be chewed nicely. Secondly, it has to pass your stomach acid. And thirdly, it has to go in a channel where it nourishes and then it makes the food like glug, you know, like um, our bowel habits which are there. So if it doesn't break down there and it just stays there and ferments, then it starts causing the diseases. So therefore, we have to be very particular what we are eating, how we are eating, in what conditions we are eating and it depends upon different different age also like suppose if somebody comes to me who is like in his uh, or her 70s or 80s then we have to see what are the deficiency they will be getting so after 65 we say both of the male and the female they go into a osteoporosis because the body is a degenerator so all the degenerative changes are there so if if a female come to me who is like a post menopausal or a pre-menopausal then we chalk out a plan where we can balance the body with a good phytoestrogens mm. but the uh, the worst part is that um now we are having this uh, sort of um, uh, google information where mm. everybody is <laughs> i had a patient uh, six months ago and uh, now she's a very regular patient she came with the 20 different types of multivitamins and herbs and that she took every day yeah that many that many and that, that can't be good for you and that's basically leading her to a um, disease called metabolic syndrome so means that? metabolic syndrome is when the body is not able to absorb so she had a bit of a obesity so and uh, she had hypertension diabetes and the bottom line of insulin means not pre-diabetic condition insulin resistance and um, a lot of uh, hormones imbalance was there so uh, somebody told her start with this then she started piling up all those vitamins and minerals and and she was in a bad shape so taking too many vitamins gives you that metabolic syndrome where your body can't process it yeah so not it. metabolic syndrome but basically your body can't take it because most of the things are synthetic so it can it can be a oxidative stress we say the body goes into oxidative stress because whatever you take are you taking a vitamin or you're taking a mineral or you are taking a herb which somebody recommended like i get a lot of patients she says oh i said why you are taking this so and there are so many interactions so if you are on uh, antidepressant and you are taking a saint john warts also and you are taking a liver detox also and you are taking an anti-inflammatory also so and you're not talking to your doctor you're not talking to a herbalist like me and a nutritionist like me then probably you will be in trouble because the body doesn't metabolize those things the way we think we think we are doing good but there are few steps of uh, healing the body therefore we are doctors you know therefore whole of the medical profession is there there are clinical nutritionists is there dietitians are there so we have a role to play and it's a vast study you know it's uh, and the body is complex so we, she says no 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 i'm doing good i said i can understand you completely understand you that but um, I think it's better when somebody says like that, I can completely understand because there's so much information out there. We are filled with information. We are in an information age. At the click of the button, if you ask one question, it will answer. So, and who knows if it's right or not? Yes. So therefore, um, I normally tell all, like, when I, whichever workshops I do, so I normally tell people like it's best that you come for a mm -hmm. consultation and I'm always available and um, my number is there. So if somebody wants to come, they can always ring me up, book an appointment mm -hmm. and um, that's the best way to go yeah. rather than treating themselves. Mm. And look, I always find it interesting when we talk about food, and you you did mention a, uh, a little bit back that how we eat and the conditions we're eating. It's not only the food we eat because we can eat perfectly well, eat fruits and veg and etc. All the things we know are good for us, but if we're eating in a stress state and other things, so if you could just enlighten us on how we eat and the conditions. You did mention it a little bit, but just yeah. To just so the most important more. thing is. Um, um, 
two months ago i did a workshop called the circadian rhythm and being an ayurvedic physician we have always talked about the circadian rhythm like the dinacharya dinacharya means how you start your day so if you are a student and you have been studying the whole night and you are awake the whole night and in the morning you are sleeping till 10 o'clock so basically and when you get up you're not moving your bowels you know and then you're feeling hungry at a wrong time and then you're binging so basically the most important thing is what time of the day you are getting up secondly how you are starting your day so if you are stressed about work and you're rushing and eating then basically you are not chewing the food properly or the food which you are taking is basically giving you no energy and then i have seen that people uh, during that time they, whatever they can munch on they will keep on munching most of the people uh, miss their lunch and they don't um, appreciate that they should have at least 15 to 20 minutes for their lunch and then the dinner so when they are eating on a dinner plate they are just so hungry that they will eat everything and probably so the size of the food is basically your two um, your hands so if we say the stomach is the size of your palm you know um One so palm. Uh, yeah so both of, both. together together oh it is is it, is it yeah. two hands together that's two hands size. together oh. is your stomach right. size so that is if you're overeating more than that then what happens is your stomach starts become because your stomach is just like your balloon so like you inflate a balloon so it's be start becoming bigger and bigger so I have got a couple of patients who used to overeat. Now they have done the bariatric surgery and their stomach size is very small. But now they are suffering from either reflux or their bowel habits are not good or they are on a fluid diet. Mm. So these are the things. So probably this is the size you should be eating. And then you should be sitting down and eating, not watching a telly or on your phone. Yeah. And the other thing, you should not be drinking cold food because... Um, cold drinks cold drinks because the why you don't have to drink the cold food if because i've seen that most of the people who eat processed or like burgers and all those things it's really a bit dry so they want to gallop oh, it yeah, yeah. you know to rather than chewing it they want to gallop it so mm -hmm. they will have a drink or something a pizza with coke yeah coke, 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 coke yeah wash you, it down with something cold yeah easy. yeah yeah so i would recommend that have a warm tea warm or a tea. herbal tea sort of a thing because the stomach acid is a hydrochloric acid so hydrochloric acid if you're taking with a cold drink it's neutralizing the acid in the stomach so when you neutralize the acid or you are changing the flora of the stomach then the food which goes in the body will just stay there if it has got less fiber then it won't move it will stay in your small intestine then it will because our la, the intestine is six meters long so to have that bowel activity we have to have a good fiber a good amount of water mostly i have seen most of my patients when they come they say yes i drink two liters of water which is very good but they should also include a good amount of fiber in their diet and chew the food so the first step of digestion starts when you chew your food because we have got salivary glands which secretes amylase so and then the all the juices from the liver and the pancreas comes in your stomach so all your fat and your protein are metabolized in your stomach then it goes into your duodenum and jejunum so jejunum is where your immunity is there because there the whole of the chyle we say the the food is digested into chyle and then it's separated into the nourishment so it goes to the channels and it nourishes and the nourishment goes through your blood and through the intestine your stool passes what was the thing after the duodenum uh jejunum so jejunum is the, that sorry i haven't heard of that what's it called Je <laughs> jejunum j-e-g-j-u-m -J jejunum so that is a part where your body divides the energy of your food and your immunity. Therefore, we say 71% of your immunity is sitting in your gut. So people who have got bad digestive and then they are stressed, they, uh, we say the SIBO, you know, the small intestinal bacterial growth. So that time the bacteria actually grows in that area of small intestine. 
rather than the mm -hmm. large intestine. So therefore, there yeah. are so many. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's best to come to a clinical nutritionist and physician like me, you know, to understand why. So when I'm teaching uh, well, or I'm doing any workshop and doing cooking classes, I always tell them the basics of digestion. So they should concentrate more on their mm -hmm. food rather than on their mobiles or talking <laughs> so that whatever because because food is a blessing you know we are so much blessed that we have food in our plate you know exactly without it we can't survive yes so how do people know if they have these digestive issues just it's, i know it's different for everyone but it's just a few little things just feeling a bit unwell in the stomach always bloated uncomfortable yeah. tired things like that so like if you have eaten a food, so it will, uh, within one or two hours, you will start feeling either a distended, bloated, or you will have a bit of a gastritis, or you will have just a stomach pain or an ache, a lot of mouth dryness. Some people feel dryness if they have too much of uh, like preservative food or additives mm -hmm. from the packets, they, then they feel very dry. So because too much of sodium causes the imbalance in our body. So oh, because sorry. the mucosa needs a lot of the pH has to be balanced. So these are the few things. And then um, the next day, if they're not able to move their bowel, according to the medical system and according to our medical books, it's written that whatever you are eating, you should defecate within 12 to 40, 24 hours maximum three days so if you have eaten something and it is giving you bloating distension diarrhea ibs type of a cramping you are getting and then if you get a rash sometimes like people have seen that some um, few of when i was in india few people have eaten a um, sort of a smoked you know um, meat or something mm -hmm. they can give a bit of a rash especially to the kids you know kid a rash or face, yeah. yeah face or an itching or something and then we have got so many uh, mm. allergies from the food you know like a shellfish mm. peanut and there are so many allergies um, so and then if you're not able to move your bowel then again um, constipation is a very big issue which is the first thing for the bowel cancer because if you are constipated for a long period the body the food or it turns into sort of a, you know how your drainage is blocked it start mm -hmm. producing gases so it start producing methane carbon dioxide even and start changing the flora the yeah mucosa of your um lower gi mm -hmm. and it starts um forming all those things mm -hmm. like polyps and it makes sense doesn't it yeah. if it's not working properly and getting all blocked up yes interesting wow well what anything else here we want to cover before we get onto our recipes yeah so i want to say like the food as medicine um for a general public becomes a, as a medicine only when we are eating a good amount of antioxidants in our diet so i have seen most of the people if you will uh, start checking yourself because there is no one to check you you mm. have to check yourself what you're eating so if 50% of the time you are eating takeaways, you are eating long shelf life food, you are taking the foods which have got additives, preservatives, you are opening up packets, you are microwaving the food, you are freezing the food for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. So because the chemistry of the food or we say oxidation of the food happens in three hours in summers and maximum in winters is eight to ten hours so if you are eating the food fresh so i recommend to the viewers like if you don't know how to cooking how to cook a good meal they can always you know ask uh, ring me for a cooking class i am do private cooking classes so you should eat there is a certain variety of food which are anti-inflammatory so like we have got seven colors in a rainbow mm. therefore we have to eat different color foods every day so different color food means the white you know the whip girl thing the violet indigo blue yellow orange red so these colors are very good especially if we talk about red they give us lycopene like there's a lot of research about lycopene how it prevents the prostate cancers mm. how it's beneficial yeah, for the bodies yeah. how it's beneficial for the eyes then the oranges are very rich in flavonoids and bioflavonoids 
and then the cherries and blueberries are very rich in anthocyanins and there's a whole research about how it's important and it can prevent cancer and lifestyle diseases then we talk about the spices and the herbs like mm -hmm. turmeric is a big yes for everyone so everybody loves turmeric and um, so therefore because of the antioxidant because the curcumin the four percent four point five percent curcumin in there prevents the helps in the inflammation anywhere in the body so in they have the powdered ones in the powdered ones or in the capsule ones or they are taking the extract so um in october i'm la launching my own curry powder and uh, turmeric latte tea <laughs> oh, nice. yeah so because a few of my patients have been using and they said they are really good so i'm preparing tea. for them yeah so on a daily basis and then cinnamon so a little bit of a mm. cinnamon they say um i was just reading one research article which says that six grams of cinnamon if consumed on a daily basis can uh, prevent the the borderline um, or they mm. can you know insulin resistance and even in the polycystic ovary ovarian disease there are so many research now coming up with the use of cinnamon and chromium interlinked together what's that like half a teaspoon quarter of a teaspoon yeah six grams will be yeah quarter of a, a quarter teaspoon a little bit. yeah but it will has to be a good quality yeah so which is a ceylon one or sri lankan one we say it's a cinnamon zelenica which is very good so that should be there and then the uh, then the other hours is like quercetin so quercetin is present uh, naturally in apples so people if eat two apples a day or one apple a day then it's all already building the immunity the blueberries are there yeah. so um, it's that saying an apple a day keeps the doctor away yeah and the beetroot is there so all the violet colors things increase the ph content because if we are eating too much of acidic mm. food and it's not at the just they will eat it and they will find the results because all the problems are at the cellular level which is deep mm. so eating just for one day or two day or for one week or 10 weeks it's not going to make a difference you have to change your lifestyle therefore we say we have to change if you want food as medicine you will have to change your lifestyle so is that apple raw or can you have it hot like you know um you know poached uh, what, what do you call it it's stewed apples stewed warm. um or do again the sugar raw? is the problem so because we should not consume too much of sugar so if they can stew the apple with less with no sugar no just stewed apple on its own yeah yeah that's fine is that all right? yeah, yeah, or i thought yeah. it had to be sort of raw you know, um, like more it's, watery. it's 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 up to you like how you want to consume because the content of the creatine doesn't change right. if you are boiling it That's or this. That's what I was curious about. Yeah. The medicinal and then, properties then the different ways of cooking is there. So the more simple your food is cooked, mm. the more antioxidant property it's holding. So like I have seen few people they will grill, they will bake, they will toast and they will change the food the way and they will put too much of salt. Mm. Salt is another problem uh, in our society and uh, sugar. So all these things are a big topics to be discussed like how we can reduce the content of the salt in our diet how we should reduce but we should not jump to the artificial sweetness too mm. so that is a big 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 thing like mm. how we can control those things and i would recommend that at least you should be taking uh, if you don't know how to cook you can take help if you have got kids you can always involve your kids yeah. and uh, recently i was doing my one of my cooking classes in mount barker we have the youngest uh, boy called harry eight years old who came with his um, mother and he was such a fun uh, cooking and he was chopping onions and Come on. Eight years old. Yeah, so that's when they're curious and interested. Yeah, that's yeah. And she's a teacher, so she's saying I am inculcating a good habit. I said you are doing a wonderful job. Exactly. So important. Yes. It's so important to start yes. them off young. Educate yeah. the kids. Young yeah, young. yeah. That's that's the key actually. If we and I have got few patients like who are in their forties or fifty who just don't want to go in the kitchen because they are so tired. I can understand that we get tired after a long day of work. Mm. But my question, I normally ask them question like, do you want to have the lifestyle diseases or do you want to be healthy? There's always a choice, you know. 
there's always a choice for them i normally say prepare ahead like on weekends take the help of your partner mm. take the help of the kids you know if you're on your own you can always prepare one meal a day you know and that's what i teach that's my passion like how they can budget their food um how to shop mm. and uh, how to stay away from all the nasty mm. food which normally can harm you in a longer run yes interesting okay so I'm, I'm just mindful of the time um so let's get right into the recipes for the yeah. listener yeah okay so which one we oh, are talking which, you can start with any one you want so the one which normally i like that uh, because now lentils are also complex carbohydrates which is very good for the body and they are very high in fiber okay and uh, to cook with the spices also one important thing so i normally tell my patients like if you can't cook the rice or dal differently you can always make a pot of khichdi so the pot of khichdi is basically consist of mung beans so if you know mung beans they are three different types of mung beans you will see in the market one is the whole green one mm. and the other one is a split green and the other one which is easily available is a yellow one so the split green is the yellow and green isn't yeah. it two times yeah so you can have one cup of mung beans or if you don't find mung beans red lentils is easily available so you can have red lentils so one cup of mung beans or red lentils one cup of basmati rice and then you soak them separately wash them really nicely and the best way to soak the rice is to at least soak them both in uh, summers only 2 to 3 hours i told one patient like to soak them and she soaked the rice and mung beans for 24 hours so it's very important don't over soak it because again it will start fermenting so you soak the beans and rice together no separately oh separate separately so because you have to wash them and yeah. then you soak it and then uh, in the meantime what you can do is you can chop um the onions the garlic and um the ginger so what you can do is um you can take a uh, two medium size onion you can take um, um one um, ginger root uh, fresh you can take or you can take you know the paste of the ginger or and the garlic and for the spices you can have um if you're co- cooking only one cup of uh, mung beans and one cup of basmati rice that will be two cups of the lentils so that will make a serving for at least four to six people mm. and that one you can add one teaspoon of one and a half teaspoon of turmeric If you have a good recipe for garam masala otherwise we can share next time uh, one teaspoon of garam masala cumin seeds and coriander seed powder if you love um green chilies you can have optional green chili and crushed black pepper um in that we normally uh, give the non starchy vegetables importance because the starchy vegetables sometimes are really heavy we are cooking khichdi because it nourishes our all the tissues of the body it's very good for our bowel health and it also cleanses our bowel and and our liver too so and um so therefore we chop the seasonal vegetables which are non starchy like celery carrots you can take any sweet potato in there and then spinach so and then you can soak it and then stir fry the onions and garlic and ginger and ghee so i use the clarified butter ghee or you can do a minimum of um, olive oil so if you mm. don't know what is ghee mm. uh, or coconut oil you can use coconut oils who are vegans and then they can just uh, saute it till the onion turns brown and then you can put the all the vegetables you have chopped and with the spices and then you can add so the best thing is so to have a good pot of khichdi is crack the rice in your hand so that it becomes a bit like mushy you know like mm. really nice and smooth texture and then you add both of lentil and the um, rice and to add to make a really uh, because the red lentils and the mung beans swell up really four times so you have to add at least 8 cups of water in two cups of that mm-hmm. okay and then give it a boil it really on a slow slow heat and uh, probably use the a pan which has got a thick bottom so it doesn't stick If you have got a pressure cooker you can always use um, on a low flame. If you don't have a pressure cooker then probably those um, airtight sort of uh, containers 
you can do a slow cooking and within uh, 20 to 30 minutes you will see it will become like a stew sort of a thing and really smooth texture and you can have with the green chutney so green chutney is another one which i really like which is a very good for, as an antioxidant so before we move on so you're, you're happy with what is white rice better than um, brown rice uh, brown rice sometimes are very heavy yeah, to digest yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so they're because... Everyone uh, says they have brown rice, but I've heard other people say white rice is better. It, it gets digested better, um, a bit lighter. We have to see the glycemic index. So according to the research, the glycemic index of basmati rice is really good. Good, okay. Yeah, Excellent. so it's very low. And there are different types of rices too. Uh, like there are different Indian varieties. Mm -hmm. We say Sona Masuri. Most people use in India, we cook with a different Hyderabadi rice, which is called the Sona Masuri for the Kitri. Uh, otherwise what you can do is um, you can have unpolished rice so which is less polished or you can have the red rice what is what is polished rice because th to make it white they polish the rice right yes um, so <laughs> different different degrees so we don't know how our food is being transformed into from one thing to the when other. you say polish do you meaning like taking the 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 hull, the taking the, the husk off. Yes. Oh, so that's what you mean. Oh, it's just a term. Yeah. 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 They say okay. polishing the yeah. rice. So probably otherwise, if you can get hold of a good variety of red rice, you can cook with red rice, yeah. red basmati rice. What about wild rice? Is that a bit hard? A yeah. wild rice, I haven't yeah. done, but um, I think it's better to use a rice More which is softer. easily digestible, softer, can give a good smooth mm. texture. Okay. You can always, um, uh, with the recipes, you can always see a little bit here and there, uh, whatever, because few people like um, brown rice, they can have a go yeah. with the brown rice. I have done once and it came out really good. Okay. So it depends upon your digestive power mm. also. True. Yeah, so how is your metabolism? That's so right. if some people, uh, even uh, I remember four years ago, I had a patient who was saying that, oh, I drink water and it starts giving me ache in the you know stomach ache. So probably that shows that how bad her digestive power mm. is, how bad her digestion mm. is. And now she's all well and she's gone. Mm. Yeah. So the other um, is... Um, so I'll, I'll just, we've just come to the end of the program. So we've just got time for one more. Maybe we can do the others on a part two. Yeah, sure. So we've just got like, if we can, a minute left. Yeah. Okay. So probably I'll tell the green chutney. The green chutney is one of the things which you can have. If you don't want to buy those dips or any of uh, the creamy textures thing you want to be healthy then you can use um, fresh mint if it's growing in your garden either you can have a fresh mint or coriander or you can have with the parsley so what you can do is you can just wash the mint really nicely if you are uh, normally i wash it with um, a little bit of apple cider vinegar just to get the um, mm. preservatives or you know sprays out and then um, one two inches of ginger if you love garlic then two pots of garlic if you want to add a little bit of uh, spring onions you can add spring onions to it mm. and then um, in winters you can use avocados when the avocados are not there you can use one tablespoon of um, coconut flakes um, and then chili is optional so you can all wash it chop it put it in your hand blender or a nutri bullet add a squeeze of a lemon and then just add drops of water till it becomes like a smooth paste the other day one of my patients actually took a picture of the <laughs> chutney and sent it to me like a message and she says i love my green chutney and i put it on my toes i had with my crackers okay, Beautiful. <laughs> yeah so this is like a green you can inculcate in your um, daily life how you can have a concentrated amount of and avocados are really good for your brain mm. they are a good source of um, good fat and normally i don't recommend to add salt in the recipes because we are taking a lot of salt the salt should be minimized to only half a teaspoon yes. on a whole day so okay. that much salt we have to add and then we can taste the food anyway we can yes taste, taste the yes spices. that's what pa taste? that's what my clients and my patients say is that since they have start using less salt they can taste the food the real taste yeah. of the food that's right yeah you taste the tomato yeah yeah so and it's really good so once and it says uh, the research says that within 21 days your taste buds will change 21 two months yeah interesting yeah interesting we need to do a part two <laughs> or, yeah 
Dr. Karuna Jaswal, thank you so much. Any yep. last quotes you want to leave our listener with? A, a quote, a positive quote or something? Um, the positive quote is, um, if you feel that you're really stuck and you don't know where to go, you can always, um, um, I can give you my website, which is like ayurvedawellbeing.com.au. And my number is 81334851. Uh, you can always ring me. I am in on Kensington Road um, because help is available. I always say to my patients who are having anxiety or stress or any type of issues, I say the help is available. You, I'm just a phone call away. Yeah. So Excellent. and be positive and be happy and be blessed and uh, um, all these things help in increasing the immunity of your body too. And staying positive with the good bunch of people is the key to good health. Perfectly said. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank Namaste. you. Namaste. 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 Thank you very much.